everyone, Riley here and welcome back to another segment of Overkill Reviews this week. Uh, you know the drill, if you haven't already, give us a like, give us a subscribe, give us a follow, definitely make sure to check out the Patreon. Um, before we get started here today, I just want to talk a little bit about what's going on in my world. So a couple of weeks ago, my grandmother passed away and she was always a massive support uh, with everything that I ever wanted to do and all of my interests. And every time a review came out, she'd text me and she'd go, awesome possum. Uh, she was just so sweet. And over the years, I definitely um, found some metal that she did appreciate. And she always tried her best to understand uh, the things that I liked and why I liked the things that I liked. And I'm going to miss her relentlessly. My grandmother was a huge light in my life. She was a huge light in my family's life. Um, and not only that, but I think that this album that we're going to talk about today is something that she would have found some appreciation in herself. Uh, so let's get into it. talking about a San Francisco based uh, doom post shoegazy metal band. This is their second full length. This is King Woman with Celestial Blues out today, July 30th, 2021 via Relapse Records. So King Woman was founded by the lead vocalist Chris Esfandiari in 2009. Like I said, they're based out of San Francisco, California, and they have one other LP prior to this one. They also have an EP. Uh, they even did a Stone Roses cover, which is pretty cool. Uh, they're really good at squeezing out the melancholy and uh, gloomy capabilities that Doom has, but they are a little bit more post-metal and shoegazy as well. Um, if I'm going to compare them, it would probably be to sounds like when Emma Ruth Rundle and Thou did a collab last year, 2020. I'm almost certain it was last year or uh, the band True Widow as well. Uh, yeah, so let's find out what Celestial Blues has in store for us. So what's good on this album? Um, everything. <laughs> I really enjoyed this listen. Uh, one of the things that I want to touch on is... Also, one of the reasons why I think King Woman was able to cultivate such a name for themselves in such a short amount of time, considering they only have one uh, previous full length before this one, um, is Chris's writing style and her influence. And it's been noted for this album in particular uh, that it's somewhat of a metaphor for a lot of trauma that she's experienced in her life. It kind of relates back to the things that I've been through in the past few years that you know, I can't really talk about in an interview, but that really almost destroyed me and you can definitely uh, hear the passion in the music. Uh, she definitely takes um, all of this tragedy and brings it into a triumph and she uses these negative aspects to really propel her and the band in King Woman's writing way, way forward. Um, it's wonderful. And I really think that Doom is a great subgenre for this. Uh, King Woman really shows that you can find so much somber and melancholic magic in the low um, and slow and somber elements of doom. I've talked about this before. I think a lot of bands, you know, you're listening to a band or an artist and you're like, wow, uh, they're really trying to pull out <laughs> all the elements and dynamics here and really show me how capable they are of their writing skills. But you're not really sure uh, where that's coming from. Like, is there any backing to this? Where's the passion in this? Like, yeah, sure. You can sweep that fast, but like, what's why, why, like what, it, what is it that's driving you forward? And then there's this disconnect between if the artist is really just trying to, um, prove a point as to how sick they are, um, or if they're writing for a reason and King woman really shows their reason. It's like when you look at a box and it tells you how epic it is and you're like, okay, sick, what's in the box? And you open it and there's nothing in there. King woman, you open that box and it's just full of so many magical things. And you're just kind of like, oh, there's something here and I'm going to, I'm going to go with this and see what this is all about. So with that being said, if you love to get moody and you know, you want 40 minutes where you can really just dip your toes into some like dark and somber pool of music, um, this is that one for you. <laughs> and I love to get moody, so it works for me. Uh, there's nine tracks on this bad boy. Uh, it kicks it off with Celestial Blues, so the self-titled track. And I have decided that this is my favorite track. 
Um, not only because I think it's a great introduction to the album, but I also think that it's very, very good on its own. Uh, she starts it off with a very uh, soft-spoken word intro, uh, and there's some sharp little tingly guitars in the background there. And then right away, it brings it into that doom element. They tune it down, you know, the tempo switches, uh, gets a little gritty, and it really sets the stage for what's to come. This album in particular is carried extremely vocally. Um, Chris has a very interesting voice and she uses a lot of different interesting techniques. Uh, she almost has like a whale-like cry. Uh, she doesn't really articulate well. It isn't very clear. Um, she holds notes for a lengthier period of time and brings them into other ones and it kind of creates that really eerie cry. Um, she also brings it into a little bit more of an aggression, aggressive hardcore punch every now and again. Um, and it's one of those yells where I'm like, I'm not even sure if this is good, but there's so much emotion packed into it and everything else that's happening is so great that it fits. Um, it's kind of like the early years of Bathory when you listen and you're like, can Corthon actually sing? I don't know, but everything else that's happening is so great that it just fits so well. This is great. I think a lot of bands, uh, particularly in Doom, tend to drown themselves in this sea of mediocrity with all of these hundreds of thousands of other bands uh, when they simply just don't have a good vocalist. They're not willing to get their hands dirty. You know, they just stick to the norm and they don't do anything different. And I think the fact that Chris, you know, takes what she has, she harnesses it, and then she takes it to other like unorthodox places. Uh, she tries new things. She spins it around. She spins it backwards. She spins it sideways. It's different. It sounds different. And then different leads into um, noteworthiness in a band or, or recognition. Recognition and noteworthiness usually leads into people remembering who you are and what you do and what your sound sounds like. And that usually means that you're just a good fucking band. So King Woman, great fucking band. They aren't just a doom band. Like I said, they have a lot of post and shoegaze elements into it as well. Um, and that leads them away from being boring. This album isn't boring. Uh, they switch it up so much. There's like songs like Psychic Wound. <laughs> and aggressive ones. There's songs like Paradise Lost, not the band, the song, um, and Entwined. They're definitely a lot more doomy and softer. Um, with that being said, there's a lot of different tempo changes. Uh, it doesn't get repetitive. There isn't very much filler. Um, it's just a nine track bad boy. And every t song that you listen to, you're ready for the next one. It's great. I love this album so much. And when it comes to the bad, I'd really have to nitpick uh, to be able to pick apart what I didn't like. And if it was one thing, I would say maybe the production is a little bit too clear for me. But even then, that's really pushing it. Um, I'm not talking that like I like gritty production, like a raw black metal album, and we just throw all senses uh, of clarity out the window. That isn't what I mean. Uh, <laughs> I just like um, a little bit more of a raw sound, especially when it's something that's so emotion filled. I think if they would have taken it a little further, it would have been a little bit overproduced um, and that emotion would have been lacking a little more. But like I said, that's really me nitpicking it um, and I don't have a lot of bad to say. I think this record was the perfect shot of what King Woman is capable of. It was such an emotional, post-doom, melancholic, weighted um, album. You know, it's really got me anticipating what else is to come for them considering that I would 
you know, think them as somewhat of a fresh band. I really hope that their career takes takes them a whole lot further. Um, yeah, high hopes, high hopes, high expectations now as well. I'm definitely going to give this a four and a half out of five skulls today here on Overkill Reviews. <laughs> We're gonna jump into the show. So the first one I have out of the three, uh, this is a Wyoming doom metal band. They're called Fell Harvest. Uh, this is their first full length self-released on July 16th, 2021. It's called A Pale Light in a Dying World. Uh, they are a three piece band. Like I said, fresh, first full length, doom metal. Definitely give it a listen. The second one I have, this is Blinding Sun with their release, The Magic Mountain, out June 1st, 2021 via Pallid Vesture. Uh, this is a raw black metal album. So if you're into black metal that sounds like a wall of hellish noise, then this is that one for you. Last but certainly not least, we have Hell Light. This is Until the Silent Embraces out June 25th, 2021 via Solitude Productions. Uh, they are a death doom band hailing from Brazil. There's some fun organ and key board on this album so definitely give that a listen as well uh thanks for coming to hang out with me today i super appreciate it i hope you have a safe and wonderful weekend take care <laughs>